be fresh and make sure I'm live. Sounds good. We'll go. There we go. Oops. I need some intro music. I need to figure out how to do that. I told you I love mine. <laughs> I definitely need that. Because I feel like I'm live before I know that I'm live. Oh, it's a nice countdown. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be next week. But for now, hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Um, welcome to Let's Get Real, the live stream where we talk about building business through real conversation on social. Can you believe we have made it through a year? I was the last person I know who had a birthday in 2020 <laughs> that was not under quarantine. And my birthday was Friday again. So it's officially a year in all of our worlds, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, my guest today also celebrated a birthday last week. So we are both one year older and wiser. Um, I'm also due for color. So there's, there's that, <laughs> if we're keeping it real. <laughs> but it was a lovely birthday. Thank you to so many people for wishing me a happy day. I had a great ride. I got a great shout out. I enjoyed some deep dish pizza direct from Chicago that we had shipped in. And it was really, really fun. Um, this morning was not so fun because it's the Monday after springing forward. And I love spring and summer. I love it being light, late. Um, but I hate this Monday morning. <laughs> it was not fun getting out of bed. Uh, but here we are, and I'm fully caffeinated. I've got my CM World mug today. I'm wearing orange in honor of our guest. So today I am welcoming Monina Wagner of Content Marketing Institute. Monina serves as the co community manager for the Content Marketing Institute, where she brings together professionals from around the globe. With a passion for connecting people, Monina previously led community initiatives for brands like Nestle, Cleveland Clinic, and Sherwin-Williams. She has an award-winning track record building, managing, and nurturing audiences. She's a proud finalist for the 2020 CMX Online Community Professional of the Year. Before her work as a community manager, Monina focused on using meaningful conversations to find and distribute great content for TV affiliates in Cleveland. In her free time, you can find Monina cheering in the stands at her daughter's lacrosse games. She is also the sitting secretary on the Recovery Resources of Cleveland Associate Board. So I'm so excited to welcome you, Mo. There we go. Hi, it's so good to see you. Hello. <laughs> I don't know whether to be, there's like so much I wanted to touch upon. I'm like, wait, I'm not wearing orange and she is. <laughs> Yes, the Monday on. after daylight savings is awful. Like, I didn't know what are and, and happy belated birthday. Like, there was tons of stuff that I just wanted to say in that little time frame. <laughs> well, here we are. So we've got, you know, 15, 20 minutes to talk about it all. But I'm so honored you're here. It's been so fun getting to know you through all of this. You know, I, I went to the virtual CM world last year. It was my first time getting to go because travel is kind of a, a hardship since I'm default parent around here. So having a virtual was actually a benefit. And I got to know you and we had a virtual coffee. I'm like, are we long lost sisters? Because we've got a lot in common. <laughs> I feel that way too. I'm glad you do. I thought it might be a little awkward to say that. No. <laughs> Gosh, I hope it's not awkward that I said it. No, I just, <laughs> I've really um, gotten to know you. But I think that the way I really got to know you was, you know, what we always talk about through Twitter. And you know, your voice on Twitter, whether you are tweeting as CMI or CM World or as yourself, there's an overlap there and we can see your personality come through. So I feel like I've really gotten to know you as a person, even through, you know, quick tweets. So, um, so it's good to have you on. Thanks um, for having me. Of course. So let's dig in a little bit. You know, content marketing is such a buzzword and I think some people know what it is. Some people don't. So talk a little bit, it just kind of tell everybody, what is the Content Marketing Institute? Now, it's funny you say that because I do think that a lot of people think it's a new concept or it's a buzzword, but really we are in our events 11th year, um, right. content marketing. Content marketing was a term that was coined by Joe Polizzi, who's our founder, many, many, many years ago. Uh, content Marketing Institute, we're basically the organization that looks to advance the practice of content marketing. So we have a daily blog where we have contributors from around the globe who contribute to it and share their expertise. Uh, we have our events, so Content Tech Summit's coming up this summer. And like you mentioned, Content Marketing World, which this year is hybrid. 
So hopefully we might get to see you and some of our other attendees here in Cleveland, um, or we'll see you online as well. So we have the options for both. But we also do consulting work. We do live streams just like this one that you're doing. We do our <laughs> weekly Twitter chats. We really have various options for other marketers to be able to really kind of learn from each other and help also them advance their career. That's great. So you mentioned it being hybrid, the uh, event this September, at the end of September. Um, and I'm planning on being there. And I think I told you when I told my husband, I'm going on a business trip to Ohio. And his whole response was, Ohio is the worst state in the country because, you know, he's a huge <laughs> Michigan fan. So I, I said, that's not, I'm not going for a football game. That's not really the point. Here. <laughs> so um, does it only work for football though? Or is he that way with basketball too? Because March Madness is starting up. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's everything. He used to have a Michigan license plate on the front of his car and he got so mad. He took it off and he said he won't put it back on until they win a national championship. <laughs> it could be any sport. Anything. So anything. And I believe that they have since then, but you know, that, that plate's not on. So I think it's really tied to football and basketball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so your role at CMI, I know that you are behind the keyboard and behind Twitter, but what's your day to day? What's sort of your role within the organization? Absolutely. So as community manager, I get really lucky, right? So I do do uh, the strategy and execution of social media. So we're on everything you can imagine, plus <laughs> Slack, plus, I mean, there's a lot of channels. We have um, private groups as well. So I get to really just uh, promote a lot of our events, but also kind of help facilitate um, those conversations that are taking place within our community. But I'm also lucky enough because I can also do that offline. So um, you will see that we do have um, meetups at the events. Um, during the year, we have um, meetups as well. So I get to do those activations too. So I have like the best of both worlds. So yeah, <laughs> I'm not really just do. behind the keyboard, but I can also do things um, in person and be able to like physically when we can hug people. Um, so it's really, it's a lot of fun. It really is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be a social person, you need to be able to do it face to face and behind the keyboard. And it sounds like you get the opportunity to do both. So that's fantastic. What a perfect, a perfect role. So before you came to CMI, you were involved with TV affiliates. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how that sort of um, catapulted you into this career? Yeah, so when I was younger, when I was still in high school, I knew that TV news was the career path I wanted to take. And I had, like a lot of marketers, we know it was very tunnel visioned and I was very determined that I knew this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to college for it. I did a few internships while I was in Chicago and I got a job in a newsroom in my hometown here in Cleveland, which was fantastic. Um, I was able to, I worked on the assignment desk. I never wanted to be in front of the camera. I never wanted to be a reporter. Um, I did enjoy producing, but that was really high stress for me, being behind the scenes and touching buttons and telling people <laughs> where to go and what to do and putting it together in a rundown. I couldn't do that, but I did enjoy being on the assignment desk, and that allowed me to really connect, um, let's say, our sources with uh -huh. the audience, with the reporters. I mean, I was there really kind of putting everyone together, and I really feel like that that was kind of my foray. It was like a way that uh -huh. I was being a community manager without being a community manager. Right. Um, so I did that for over a decade. I loved being in the newsroom. But um, for me, being, <laughs> um, I needed to be mom. And a lot of times I was working weekends. A lot of times I was working holidays to fill in for people. And it just, it didn't work for my family at the time. So I had to make the jump. So I made the jump outside of, out of TV news. Mm-hmm. We have very similar paths, although mine was not in the newsroom. Mine was in hospitality. I did event planning for 10 years mm -hmm. and same kind of story. I, I needed to be mom and I couldn't just fly mm -hmm. to Vegas and plan some crazy party yeah. <laughs> the next day. So um, so I found a way to be mom, work full time. And um, yeah, so very, very similar kind of story. So talk to us a little bit. You know, there are people out there learning how to be better about creating content. When I first started 
you know, we would pull a link and curate content. And then we started creating content. We're always kind of driving home with our clients how important it is that they have unique content that they own. So blog posts are important. Videos are important. And, and changing up their website, reminding Google that they're relevant is a really big, important piece of this. Because when I'm on Twitter and I need to link back to their website, I can't link to the same contact form over and over and over because right. it's just not going to work. So when you're creating content, What's your favorite part about it? And what do you find to be the biggest challenge sort of in your day to day? Um, I think my answer is the same for both, if you okay. can believe that. I think my favorite part of um, creating content is really the ideation process. And that requires for me to go to the community and ask what they want. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also a challenge because, and I'll get to that. But I think that's my favorite part. And it's because I enjoy talking to people. I, I enjoy finding out what's really important to them. I mm -hmm. enjoy hearing, you know, just this morning, I had a conversation with someone in the community who told me that made zero sense. <laughs> like how you wrote it, it didn't, it didn't work. <laughs> and I did get offended. I won't lie. I totally was <laughs> offended, but I was like, it made me go back and look at it and say, how could I have done this better? What should right. I have done? So that's a challenge because I, I, you know, you want to be really proud of what you do. And when someone says, not good, doesn't work, <laughs> you know, like, like that's a huge learning curve for me. Um, right. But it's also hard because when you ask someone within your community, you know, well, what do you think? Sometimes they don't feel comfortable enough to mm -hmm. tell you the truth right. about right. what they need, what type of content they want to consume, what they want to, you know, see from you. So I think that's also a challenge, right? So that I'm fortunate enough to be surrounded by this wonderful group of people. Um, yeah. But sometimes I think because we all feel so connected and so, you know, we all do see each other as friends and we are friends, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but all of a sudden that takes precedence over being peers and colleagues and you sometimes don't want to be able you don't want to tell them the truth as to really how you feel about it so i think that's the challenge too when creating content is really just kind of digging in and honing in and uh -huh. finding out um what really works for the people who are reading and watching and participating you need like an anonymous suggestion email so people can tell you and nobody's <laughs> right. feelings can hurt that'd be a good good tool <laughs> So speaking of your colleagues, last week I got to be the guest on the CM World um, tweet chat, and then I got to be on the live stream right after, and Kathy was filling in for you because you yeah. had your, your birthday celebration, so I hope you <laughs> enjoyed your day. Um, but talk to me about, you know, one of the challenges I think companies have, especially, you know, bigger companies, but not not even necessarily, you know, they sometimes people job share, and sometimes there are different people who are behind the keyboard, but... You have to make sure that that branding and that message follows some kind of guidelines. So even on that one day when Kathy was the voice behind the brand, you couldn't really tell that. I mean, I knew it wasn't you, but I don't know that everybody, if they weren't told that, I don't know that they would know that because the brand's voice is the brand's voice. So any recommendations for companies out there who do have multiple people popping in and out, what are the best ways to have sort of like um, you know, brand strategies for your message. I think we're really lucky at CMI, like you said, because um, I think our brand voice was really defined uh, well across all of our team. So editorial, sales, marketing, social, uh, you know, we all know what the brand voice is. And I think anyone could fill in. I mean, <laughs> Kathy does a fantastic job. It's Kathy, you know, social was Kathy's baby before I came on. Um, mm -hmm. I think anyone, though, on our team could fill in because we do know what that is. I have always been, I've been on brands before where there are a number of us and it is far from similar to what my tone and what my voice is. <laughs> um, and I think what really helps is, is I'm a huge proponent of having a brand playbook for social mm -hmm. media where it outlines not only about who you are, but who you aren't. So that it really kind of gives you a baseline as to whether, oh, that's not who we are. I need to step back and think about what tweet I'm crafting or what questions I'm asking on a live stream, because that's something that the brand itself would never do. And I really think having those um, in a playbook and also like examples to show, yeah. you know, we have tried this before and that just really is not who we are, um, mm -hmm. is really important to have in that playbook, too. So I can't speak enough 
about how important having a playbook is. Mm -hmm. um, I always used to say in TV, and I still say it now, which seems a bit morbid, but I always say, you know, if I get hit by a bus, here, here's my playbook, here right. is my file, this is how things are done. So that yeah. things, you know, there's this continuity that will, that will be there even when I'm gone. So I think, you know, every brand should have that. Yeah, I like that to know not just who you are, but who you aren't. That's important. Um, yeah. yeah, we have to educate clients on that sometimes too. They'll, they'll throw something out. Hey, here's a, a great idea. I'm like, help me understand how this is you. <laughs> so well, we and that's to, particularly, you know, that. yeah, right. And that particularly is um, something that happens in social media, right? You see the shiny, you know, it's the, the squirrel syndrome and you just, right? <laughs> you have to reel them back in and say, <laughs> well, how does this, how, right. How is this our brand? And right. how is this, even if it is our brand, how does it fit with what we're trying to achieve? So exactly. Yeah. I, I think that's something that always comes up in social media. Right. Right. So a lot of things have changed this year, obviously, and I think some of them will stick, some of them will go back, some of them may evolve into something new. What do you think, if you had a crystal ball and could guess, what do you think the future looks like for social? Where do you, where do you think it's headed? Oh, good question. I love this one. I think, <laughs> I think uh, social media used to be this big, broad thing. And I think now the intimacy of social media is what's going to stay. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's live streams like this, where really it's you and me, right? right? And we're just, I'm so fortunate that we can just welcome others to be a part of this conversation. Um, or if it's uh, groups like Slack groups, Facebook groups, being in discord, mm -hmm. things of that nature, where people are now finding these little pockets, this, these niches where they they want to hang out with these people and they're in there for a reason. I think with COVID, everyone mm -hmm. was craving some kind of connection, right? Definitely. And they were able to find that online. They were able to find that online. And while we all make fun of like Zoom fatigue and like <laughs> social media, but the thing is that's really what helped a lot of us get through the Absolutely. last 12 months. Yeah. And I think that is something that really is going to continue um, mm -hmm. and will not, you know, we, we see people on Clubhouse now, like mm -hmm. even though there's thousands of people there, it doesn't feel that way. It feels so close knit. And I think yeah. that is something that's really, that's something that we're gonna see stay. And I don't think that will ever change. Yeah, I agree. You know, and I think, I think for a while it kind of did. And I think people have pulled back into it where it's not so focused on the media, it's focused on the social. And mm -hmm. really that's that's why all of this was built. That's how it came about. And I'm glad to see companies, brands, individuals, humans, just speaking with each other and engaging. And, you know, I like with us, we met on Twitter, we had a virtual coffee <laughs> over Zoom. And, you know, I think that those kinds of relationships have really, they've definitely kept me going. So I look forward to continuing that kind of stuff as we go forward. Agreed. Um, all right. So I've got one more question for you. And this isn't really even about content, but you posted last week on Instagram that you were working really hard to get to inbox zero. So I got to know, <laughs> did you get there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Does anybody? <laughs> so, I, I did. So I prefer to have my inbox under 10 because it's like my to-do list, right? So it's my, my digital to-do list. Then I have my planner, which I'm a very pen and paper type of person, so I have to have Me both. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, I used to have under 10 until COVID hit, and I'm not sure what <sighs> happened. Now I know mine could be completely worse. I have seen examples of worse <laughs> inboxes. But I'm close to 700 right now, and it's giving me the worst anxiety <laughs> because I feel, and I know things are falling through the cracks because of it, right? Because right, now right. I'm digging, trying to find things. Um, so no, I did not get to <laughs> inbox zero. I kind of wish that I had. Um, I apologize to anyone who I've not responded <laughs> to. I tell everyone, get me on Twitter because it's, or Instagram probably is probably the right, best way to right. like get a hold of me. <laughs> hard to keep up when you have all of these emails from, you know, everywhere I shop every day and I keep trying to unsubscribe or move them to junk, but I just, it won't stop. So see um, now yeah. I have three email addresses. Let's not tell people that like one specifically <laughs> for like where I shop, one for work, like right. one for, you know, my kids, one for like my personal emails. Oh, so I have four actually. Right. Um, so yeah. So <laughs> I do too. We're not even counting the that. same inbox. I have to like remember to just <laughs> click on the work one and focus on that. But sometimes it's just like all of them. I'm like, it's too much. <laughs> oh boy. 
Well, Mo, thank you. Thank you for joining me this morning. I know you've got a ton going on right now, so I appreciate you taking some time this morning to be with us and share your thoughts about content. I cannot wait until September when I get to hug you and meet you in person. It's going to be fantastic. So oh, I really, I can't really wait. appreciate thank it. You. I'm going to put up here on the screen, if anyone would like to connect with Monina, here are all of her ways to contact her. She's on everything as herself and you can find her through content marketing institute she's behind the keyboard um whether on her phone or on the computer so make sure to reach out she's a great resource that organization is a great resource i've learned a ton this year um just to keep improving content marketing for my clients you know we've been at this for a long time but there's there's no time like the present to get better at it so thank you for coming and have a wonderful rest of your week Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So everyone, thank you for joining me today. It was so great. I hope that you learned a lot about content. I hope you learned a lot about Monina. I had a wonderful time seeing her. If you need help with your content marketing or your social media management or engagement, you can reach me at 520eastbrands.com. You can also reach me on Twitter at 520 East Brands. And I will see you again next week. Next week, I'm having another friend I met on Twitter. I actually met her through the Content Marketing Institute. Maureen Jan is joining me. She is an amazing strategist. We've gotten to work together in the past few months. And I am so honored that she's joining me. She's getting up early because she's on the West Coast. So she's getting up early to join me. Um, and it's it'll be a hoot. I am sure that there will be lots and lots of laughs. So join me then. And until then, have a wonderful week. Thanks, everyone.